He has some great resources, and they're very expensive, easy for you to get. Um, you know, remember in that video we just saw that uh, they had the prayer card you saw. Well, you know, we also offer these beautiful little prayer cards of Divine Mercy. You can see you can get a box of these, a thousand of them, for only $14.95 and shipped free of charge. Then you do what Father Mike says. You just pass them out and uh, take off, and you say it's a hit and run, but it's for the Lord. Amen. And uh, we do the Lord's work, so it's a great idea. Well, now, in this next clip, let's see exactly how it happened that we Marians started producing uh, such divine mercy materials right here on Eden Hill. And the connection between Faustina and Sopochko may surprise you. Let's watch. Now, it's easy to imagine how the message of divine mercy would have helped prepare the people of Poland for the terror that would soon come. After all, it was a message of consolation and hope, a message of God's compassion for those who are suffering, and a message of a love that's more powerful than evil. Once the war started, it became quite difficult to spread this good news. In fact, after the Nazis invaded and occupied Poland, Father Sapochko found it nearly impossible to print and distribute his prayer cards and booklets. So the burning questions in his heart were, who can carry the message? Who can spread it to the world? Well, in 1940, a number of priests and seminarians told a member of my own community, Father Joseph Yarzhimbowski, about the work of Father Sapochko. They related to him that Sopochko had been spreading the devotion to divine mercy all over the country. So Father Yarzhabovsky went to meet him. Now during their meeting, Sopochko learned of Yarzhabovsky's plans to make the perilous journey from Poland to his religious house in Washington, D.C. Sopochko then told Yarzhabovsky about the divine mercy message and devotion and gave him several documents regarding it. Now while Father Yarzhabovsky was skeptical of any private revelations not yet approved by the church, he was deeply moved by what he heard. Then Father Sopochko gave him some final instructions. When you arrive in the States, notify the bishops and spread the message. Now thinking of the dangerous journey ahead of him, Father Yarzhabovsky replied, if I arrive safely, I will count it as a miracle and I will spread this message and devotion till the end of my life. Now Father Yarzhabovsky knew he needed a miracle to get to the United States because for one thing, he didn't have the appropriate Russian visas and permits to travel. And on top of that, his American visa had already expired. But filled with trust and divine mercy, he started his trip. He traveled by train across Russia, through Siberia, and to the port city of Vladivostok, where he hoped to take a boat to Japan. Unfortunately, on every train, he encountered two members of Russia's secret police. They would question Father Yarzhabovsky about his travel papers, especially since he didn't have a valid Japanese transit visa. Well, Trusting that Jesus, the divine mercy, would help him, Father Yarzhabovsky told them that the necessary documents would be waiting for him at a later train stop. Fortunately, they believed him and allowed him to continue on. When Father Yarzhabovsky got to the last stop in Vladivostok, he applied for a Japanese visa. Now, if his request was denied, there would be no getting on the boat to America. And the big problem was that in order to get the Japanese transit visa, he had to present his expired American visa. So well aware of his predicament, Father Yarzhabovsky prayed to the merciful Jesus and gave the consulate his American visa without the sheet containing the expiration date. Thankfully, the consulate didn't seem to notice, and they gave him the necessary travel documents. Relieved, Father Yarzhabovsky began to board the ship for Japan. But as he did, he realized that the customs agents were confiscating crosses and books. So again, he prayed to Jesus to save his divine mercy materials. Meanwhile, one of the customs agents took Father's breviary out of a bag and began to look through it. He wasn't sure what to make of it, but found the prayer cards charming and let it all go. In fact, he marked that bag with chalk, and then without bothering to look inside, he approved the second bag as well. And that was the bag with the Divine Mercy materials. Now, the ship to Japan had accommodations for only 80 people, yet there were more than 500 people on board. But Father Yarzhabowski didn't seem to mind. He was on his way to freedom. Father's ship pulled into its Japanese port on March 13, 1941, two days after its departure. Then, soon after his arrival, Father Yarzhabovsky met up with the Franciscans who had helped finance his passage. Perhaps because of his extraordinary joy and the amazing story he told them, they invited him to give them a retreat. He did so at their Mugenzai no Sano, or Garden of the Immaculate Monastery in Nagasaki. Of course, the theme of the retreat was divine mercy. Now, unfortunately, the founder of the monastery couldn't attend the retreat. His name? 
St. Maximilian Kolbe, and he couldn't attend because he was being held prisoner at the Auschwitz death camp. There at that terrible place of suffering, just five months after Yarzhabovsky's arrival in Japan, Kolbe freely gave up his life so that a stranger might live. Meanwhile, Father Yarzhabovsky was called not to martyrdom, but to another form of service. In May of 1941, seven months before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Father Yarzabowski successfully made his way to Washington, D.C. On his arrival at the Marian's religious house there, he knew that the merciful Savior had brought him home safely to his brothers, and he kept his promise to Father Sapochko by spreading the divine mercy message throughout the country. My mission will not come to an end upon my death, but will begin. Eventually, from their printing presses in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, Father Yarzhabovsky's religious community, the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception, went on to spread the message of divine mercy throughout the whole world. <laughs>